All right, uh, lecture seven, exemptions and uh, let's exceptions, let's begin. So historically, sanctions were all or nothing action taken against another country, usually in the form of embargo. So I guess all or nothing trade embargoes. Today, most sanctions regimes include a licensing program. It's a bit weaker than usual. A license is a written authorization issued by a sanctions regulator that permits an activity that otherwise might be prohibited or restricted under a particular sanction. The law or regulations passed to implement financial sanctions will generally contain a licensing program that allows otherwise prohibited transactions to take place in some circumstance in the form of a general license and specific licenses. General licenses and specific licenses can also be viewed in terms of exemptions and exceptions retrospectively. A general license or exemption is available to all persons authorizing the performance of certain categories of transactions and the form of the licensing agency beforehand. For example, pistachios and carpets, well-known commodities from Iran, used to be under general license and popularity. So this still goes on to Iran sanctions. So clearly, like the European Union, and we discussed this above, and the US have very different views on Iran in terms of the sanctions program. Alternatively, a person can request a specific license or exception from the administrating agent on a case-by-case -case basis under certain limited situations and conditions. These specific licenses allow for the transactions that are otherwise prohibited and must be presented with a licensed transaction. A request must be submitted for a specific license from OFAC for straightforward transactions. It may take OFAC a few months to make a determination for more complex transactions, the process can last up to a year or longer. If a person is denied an OFAC license, they may appeal the decision to a US federal court, which will cost money. However, historically, the courts have provided substantial defer deference of OFAC's decisions, meaning that they'll go with OFAC. The global nature of trade and support activities means that there might be a number of different jurisdictions where a license is required, i.e., the documentation needed for these activities can also be quite complex. So we need to see some examples here of this happening. The overall objective of a licensing system is to strike an appropriate balance between minimizing the risk of assets, or well, number one, minimizing the risk of assets being used by a sanctioned target to engage in restricted activities and meeting the human rights or basic needs of the target while avoiding unintended economic consequences for unrelated industries and parties. So that's, that's sanctions in general. You want to punish someone, but you don't want to affect innocent people. It's just the, the, the constant balance of sanctions. Those exemptions can be based on purpose or class of person or achieved through a licensing regime. Most sanctions regimes contain general license for acquiring legal services, including OFAC, which allows for providing legal services to sanctions targets for the following, among other things. Compliance with the US and state laws, so as long as it is not regulated, or what you call not uh, related to the facilitation of sanctions activity, representation of the foreign agency with respect to US sanctions, representation where the US law requires access to legal counsel at the public's expense, for example, a criminal proceeding. Additionally, OFAC allows for non-scheduled emergency services to be provided for sanctions targets. However, in many cases, the receipt of payment for these services, medical legal, still must be specifically licensed. Okay, in the UK, an export control joint unit, so this is UK sanctions, is responsible for issuing licenses to export controlled countries and goods that might be caught by a country specific embargo. Other authorities in the UK, such as the OFS, OFSI, issue license applications to deal with the funds or assets of target individuals. The UK has issued a small number of general licenses under two of its terrorism related sanctions restrictions. These general licenses apply only in the specific circumstances set out in each license. The permitted activities may include issue, issuing issuance of the sanctions target and allowing certain temporary provisions under insurance policies, such as the use of a courtesy car or temporary accommodation. Another one, paying solicitors to provide legal aid where advice and representation is sought by a sanctions target. Okay. Allowing a third party, such as a family member, to pay money to solicitors who may be aiding, acting for a sanctions target. All right. The use guide to best practices distinguish between economic resources and consumption use. Whereas the former are subject to sanctions, the latter are not prohibited owing to their consumption nature and lack of transferability. These exemptions apply to domestic supplies such as gas, electricity, telephone, other utilities because preventing consumption. Personal use of economic resources is neither desirable nor intended. In the case of mistaken identity, the EU also establishes as a best practice that natural persons should be able to access necessary funds 
for their basic needs while the investigation is ongoing. An example would be a refugee requiring a bank account for social welfare payments. Yeah, okay, that's an interesting one. Sanctions type. This is where it gets better. I'm looking forward more to this. It is important to understand how to identify the various categories and types of sanctions as its meanings in the words are important to strong governance, risk management and compliance framework. Types of sanctions, trade sanctions, financial sanctions, comprehensive sanctions, that's like OFAC US, targeted sanctions or smart sanctions, sectoral sanctions, travel bans, all right, economic sanctions. Economic sanctions can be divided into trade sanctions and financial sanctions. Economic sanctions are intended, uh, intended to impact targets in two primary ways, imposing trade sanctions that limit the target country's exports or restrict its imports, and opposing financial sanctions that impede including finance, including reducing A. All right, cool. Let's do trade sanctions. So trade sanctions, this is a big sanctions. Embargoes are trade sanctions that are intended to limit the targeted country's imports and exports. Trade sanctions in, in the form of limits a country's exports and reducing its foreign sales and its foreign exchange. So re reducing enterprise. Trade sanctions in the form of limits on a country's imports or the sanctioning country's exports to a target country. The aim is to deny the targeted country critical goods. Okay, when the sanctioned country exports a large percentage of its total global output, the imposition of export restrictions may cause a higher price for alternative sources and alternative goods so penalize them total trade embargoes are rarer because there are unintended consequences to the citizen of a target citizenry of a targeted country yet just screws them most trade sanctions are selective meaning they are a, they that they target for example energy gas finance or luxury goods moreover in most cases the trade is only diverted trade sanctions also rarely impact the political elite well, we see that yeah who may also benefit from the black market. So, so you could have a situation where it doesn't help and then the black market grows. It's true. Um, their impact is generally diffused throughout the entire population of the country. Transshipment of goods and the shipment through intermediate countries prior to the goods final destination. This can become risky as the intermediate countries might become sanctioned as in the case of shipping goods first through a port of Iran prior to landing into Afghanistan. Sanctions regimes may also specifically prohibit transshipment of goods. All right. Understanding the geography scope of sanctions is vital to ensuring that customer due diligence and ongoing monitoring are conducted correctly. The wide reach of the restricted imposed by the US and EU means that steps must be taken to clearly understand the geographic links a customer might have in terms of their citizenship, residency, place of registration and operation and the country related or the subsidiary entities. Trade restrictions can have multiple geographic connections for this reason. Understanding the restrictions that might actually apply to each of these connections is critical to ensuring that possible sanctions risks are identified before business is transacted. As we do at banks, all right, we, we identify the sanctions risk before it happens. Arms embargoes are a specific type of embargo that only applies to weapons and dual use goods, which are goods that can be used for both civilian and military purposes. The Wasanar arrangement of export controls and conventional arms and dual use goods for technologies, or the Wasanar arrangement includes 42 states that have committed greater responsibility and transparency in the exports or weapons of dual use goods. The core objective of the WA is to provide information to members on those entities whose application for export licenses for providing certain goods were denied. All right. For conventional weapons, members of voluntary report information every six months. For dual use goods and other sensitive items, the WA breaks, uh, breaks them reporting into tiers. For tier one items, which are basic items, Members agree to voluntarily provide information on those proposed export licenses that were denied to non wasanar members twice per year. For Tier 2 items, the WA requests members to notify Wasanar Secretariat when an export license is denied to non wasanar members on proposed transfers. Additionally, members are to report to the Wasanar Secretariat any export license approvals that are essentially identical transactions that another member has previously denied. The WA assets members to control arms exports and prevent arms from being acquired by terrorist groups.